Now, this conference is made possible by the one and only Greg Prescott, creator and webmaster of N5D.com and Body, Mind, Soul, Spirit.com. Please give Greg a warm welcome. Namaste and welcome to our N5D Super Power Activation Conference. Who's ready for a DNA activation, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's put it on. Yeah. Get, get my little clicker here. There we go. So I imagine everyone's pretty much aware of the secret and the law of attraction. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's everything. If it wasn't for the Law of Attraction, this conference wouldn't be happening right now. So, I'll tell you a little story about my daughter. Um, my daughter, Brittany, was conceived on my 33rd birthday. As you know, that 33 is a master number. And it was in 1993, and if you add up the numbers there, that adds up to 22, yet another master number. Um, when she, was, when she was young, maybe one or two years old, we got separated and subsequently divorced. And I had joint custody of her, and I would have her Monday, Wednesday, and every other weekend. Her mom would have her Tuesday, Thursday, and every other weekend. And whoever had her for the weekend would get her on Fridays. So one day I went to pick up Brittany at her mom's house, and she, she wasn't ready at that time. So her mom, Amy, said, and this was back, I believe, in 2006. She, she said, are you familiar with The Secret? Have you ever seen the trailer to it? And this is when it first came out, and I said, no. So I went inside and checked it out, and uh, I was so blown away that by the time Brittany and I got back to our house, I ordered the DVD, and I got it within a few days. And uh, so I ended up uh, getting this, what I call a galactic download, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, the main point about the secret and the law of attraction is every day we're being guided and we're being pushed in a certain direction. I'll give you a few examples of that. This is one of my favorite examples, actually. I was born in upstate New York in the Catskill Mountains, a little town called Oneonta. And it's called the City of the Hills. And we have a large Mohawk Indian uh, population up there, or did at one time. And I always had this affinity to palm trees and the ocean. And I had no idea why, because here I am in the middle of the mountains, and <laughs> it's not a palm tree or an ocean anywhere near me. So uh, eventually, I ended up moving to Florida, and I had a dream where I met my spirit guide. Has anyone met their spirit guide? Yeah, we got a few people in here. That's, that's great. So here I am in my dream. I, I, I meet my spirit guide. She's an Indian woman, long black hair, long white flowing dress, and like a Mexican Indian woman. And she goes, hi, I'm your spirit guide. My name is Tamara. And I was so blown away. And in my mind, I just, I did not want to forget her name. So I kept saying Tamara over and over and over again. And I said it so many times, I woke my, myself up out of, out of my sleep. I didn't, ha I didn't ask her one question. Here, here's my opportunity. I could ask her anything in the world. I'm just standing there, Tamara, Tamara, Tamara. <laughs> so it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I'm wide awake. You know, I just met my spirit guide. <laughs> How can you fall back asleep to that? So I get on the computer, and uh, I type in Tamara, meaning. As it turns out, Tamara means palm tree. So that explains my affinity to the palm trees and the ocean. Now, we got some, uh, some older people like my generation here. Do you remember these magazine ads that they had in the back of the map? Like the uh, x-ray vision glasses there? The spy pen radio joke gum? Uh. One time, when I was younger, I think it might have been in the back of a mad magazine or something. I saw an ad back there, and it was for a, a book on black magic, but more specifically, they talked about astral projection in there, and I thought, man, i got to have this book. So I did a bunch of odd jobs. I was like maybe 11 or 12 years old at the time. I did a, did a lot of odd jobs, and uh, like mowing lawns and whatever, to save up the money for it. Problem was, 
I was raised in a Methodist family, so how do you tell your parents, hey, here's the cash, can you write me a check for this book on black magic? <laughs> that, was, that wasn't gonna happen. So, 11 years old, what do I do? I, I put the cash in an envelope and send it out. And like four weeks later, I got the book. And uh, you know, I went to the mailbox every day to make sure my parents wouldn't see it. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and I tried the astral projection then at 12 years old, and it didn't work. You really have to work on it. And I can tell you one thing, too. Shut off your cell phone if you're going to try <laughs> astral projecting. I, I had that issue about two years ago. So uh, that's, that's another point right there. We're always being guided. And I knew that at a young age, 11, 12 years old, I had this sincere interest in the metaphysics. Now, getting back to the secret, the DVD talks about how to manifest the parking spot. I don't know if anyone's seen the video. Probably most of us have by now. And what you do is you envision that the spot's there waiting for you. So I figured, well, the universe is full of abundance. I'm going to manifest three of them, and I'll have my choice. <laughs> so that's what I end up doing. I, I envision that you know, my parking spot is open, and as Michelle can attest, there's this little beach that we go to, and let's see, right here is the parking lot, that's it, it's only about 25 cars that can fit there, and if I can zoom in, there we go, that, that first car, whoops, <laughs> that first car right there, that's a Chrysler Sebring with a tan convertible top, yes, that's mine, I manifest that spot every time, I don't care how busy it is, <laughs> Michelle just shakes her head, she's like, how do you do this, <laughs> well, I, I just know it's going to be there, it's always there, it doesn't matter, if it's a Saturday, the busiest day of the year, 12 o'clock, that's my spot. So, getting back to the secret. In about 2006 or so, the secret tells you to ask the universe for ideas and suggestions. Now, at the time, I was a child and family therapist. That was my website. And uh, I was working with at-risk youth. And I have a patent pending program designed to help families who are at risk of dissolution, children going through the re reunification process, such as foster homes, and parents in need of parenting classes. And my program was ac accepted in the area's largest human service facility in the area. So I was working with a lot of kids here in the area. And I even wrote a book called 100 Plus Common Parenting Mistakes. Um, but I knew that there was something greater that I had to do. So I put it out there. I asked the universe for ideas and suggestions, and that's when I got what I call a galactic download. Has anyone had something like that, a galactic download, where you get this information just coming at you? And we have a few hands here that understand what I'm talking about. And uh, what, what, was, what I was told was, I need to build in 5D. That's, that's my website. The universe even gave me the name in 5D, and they said, this is what you need to do, the material you need to put on. You have to get out there and do radio shows. <laughs> they didn't say anything about conferences. Apparently, the universe didn't realize I'm a huge introvert, so. <laughs> <laughs> but here I am, because it is in the greater good, and I feel like you're all family to me anyway, so. Well, my parents were concerned at the time because, you know, here I am, a successful child and family therapist, and I told them that this is what I'm going to do full time, is the websites. And they're like, oh, no, you should be doing your family therapy thing and on the side. I'm like, no, I'm being guided. And uh, as it turns out, they've, uh, they've since told me that they're proud of what I'm doing, and they're glad I didn't listen to them. So, <laughs> so uh, because of the law of attraction and my daughter, Brittany, we're all here today. And this is how the law of attraction works. N5D reaches between one to three plus million visitors every month. Uh, and my daughter, Brittany, even though she, right now she's a, uh, she's a waitress at Applebee's, and uh, she's, she's a really good soul, she, she's a psychic, but she doesn't realize how many millions of people she's helped inadvertently every day. So she's done her job, as far as I'm concerned. A little funny story about her, too. She, uh, any uh, men with daughters here? Yeah, okay, you guys are going to relate to this. <laughs> well, she helped tear down that, that masculine 
macho image that we all have growing up. And I remember I used to be a huge sports fanatic, and I still watch football on Sundays, but uh, I used to be very much into that when I was younger. And uh, my daughter, she was maybe three or four years old, and she'd call, curl up in a little ball on my lap around eight o'clock at night on Sunday and Monday night, when there's Sunday night and Monday night football. She'd curl up in a little ball and look at me with her little puppy dog eyes, and in, in her little angel voice, she'd say, Daddy, can I stay up and watch a little football with you? <laughs> I go, sure, punk, and five minutes later, she's running around doing everything other than watching football. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, she tore down that side of me, and I've, I live life, life like a kid now, because, and that's part of me I'm not going to let go of again. And I'm sure that the guys that are here, and the girls that have done this to their parents, their father, you had them wrapped around your little finger, and your daughter had your, you wrapped around your little finger as well. So that's, that's how it works. But what I told you so far is just evidence of how the law of attraction works. It's everything. And like I said, we wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the law of attraction. Here we are in Siesta Key, the most beautiful place on the planet as far as I'm concerned. As most of you know, it has the 99% quartz crystal sand. It's uh, the most unique beach that you'll find in the world. There's not one other beach that's like this with the 99% quartz crystal sand. And currently, right now, it's the number one beach in the United States. So when I first moved to Florida, I was living up north, a little south of Tampa, and I'd end up going to Clearwater, St. Pete, or Apollo Beach. Even though I knew that Siesta Key was here, I figured, well, a beach is a beach. Wrong. <laughs> Wait till you go here, I'm telling you, it's amazing. So I went down to visit my parents. My parents live in Fort Myers. That's about an hour south of here. And on the way home, I needed gas. I was on empty. I was actually below empty. And as fate and synchronicity would have it, the next exit was for Siesta Key. So I figured, what the heck? I'll pull off, get some gas, and uh, go to, go to uh, check it out and we'll see what it's all about. So I get the gas, and I, I pull into the parking lot. And once you know it, the best parking spot available was there waiting for me. <laughs> of course. Uh, the closest one to the beach, I get out, and as soon as I step foot on that 99% quartz crystal sand, it was magic. I knew I had to get a place here. And within a week, I found a place. Um, and I've been here ever since. It, and for those who haven't been on the beach yet, you're going to feel that energy. So in our first conference, N5D conference in 2013, we had that on Lido Key. And uh, one of our speakers was Lisa Renee. She said she absolutely positively had to attend that conference because there's a major stargate right off the coast of Siesta Key. And apparently the malevolent extraterrestrials were using that to come in and go out of. So she had to come here to close that, that portal, that stargate. And I find it interesting that my own belief is that the reason why we have this 99% quartz crystal sand is because this is part of Atlantis. This is, perhaps Atlantis sunk off the coast, maybe this was actually part of Atlantis itself in Siesta Key. But there's a magic there that is totally indescribable. And I also find it interesting that Lisa Renee was here talking about a Stargate and how there's a program called Stargate Atlantis, it all ties together. So when I go to the beach, this is a uh, Crescent Beach. It's my favorite beach on Siesta Key. And uh, I do what's called a walk of gratitude. So on the way down, I'm walking down the beach and uh, people are walking by and I smile and I say good morning, but inside I'm saying, I love you. And I'm an introvert, like I said, and large crowds are very intimidating. But you guys are all family, so this isn't so bad. <laughs> but what I envision, though, is that everybody on the beach is family also. It's a family reunion. And when you have that, when you envision that everyone's family, and you look at, at, at them as family, it changes everything. It totally changes the energy of how you see, think, and feel to all the people that you uh, encounter. So you don't see fear when you see family. Well, maybe some of you do. I don't know. 
<laughs> but what you see, well, at least what, what I see and feel is love. And when you project that out there, it changes everything. You're already changing the collective unconscious. So that's me at the seawall. This is where I stop and do my um, walk of gratitude. Um, and this is my reminder to give gratitude. Gratitude is huge, as you know, through the secret, to show your appreciation. Now, it's about a 400 yard walk down to, from Crescent Beach to the seawall. And I stop here and I thank Creator, Source, Universe, Spirit Guides and Guardian Angels, friends and family on both sides of the veil, galactic neighbors and friends, my higher self, and Mother Earth. And I basically say, it changes every time, but I basically say thank you for guiding me to everything I've become and all that I will be. Thank you for providing abundance, safety, protection, and guidance. And then, and then I promise to listen with open eyes, ear, mind, and heart to the guidance I'm being provided. And then I use Ho'oponopono, and I go through all my posse, as I call them, spirit guides, guardian angels, universe, source, <laughs> creator, my posse, and I tell them thank you for all, everything that you provided. I'm sorry if I don't say this as often as I should. Please forgive me, and more than anything, I love you. I also ask that they help me turn on all the codons in my DNA so I can heal myself and others in humanity's best interests. And I'll talk about codons uh, a little later on here, but that's going to be your superpower activation. And then on my way back, I ask them to do a love bubble walk with me. A love bubble is I envision this body of energy that covers the whole beach. And everybody that comes into my energy gets healing, loving energy. And I ask them to join me and magnify that with me and extend it out as far as you want throughout the planet, galaxy, universe, multiverse, as far as you want, extend it out there. So we're sending out all this healing on the beach magnified with the quartz crystal sand. And that's, that's something, the love bubble, you can do anywhere. You can do that in a mall. You can do that in, yeah, uh, in your car driving, just envisioning love and sending that energy out anywhere. It costs nothing. And every thought is energy that helps to break down the matrix. And as a bonus, you get what I call galactic credits. <laughs> These are for light workers who unselfishly do good deeds for others that go unnoticed. And that might be, for example, meditating for world peace, or it's just simply holding the space and the energy until this transition occurs. You're getting galactic credit, so keep up the good work. And that's one more picture of Siesta Key. So, how can we change our DNA right now? That's what I'm working on. These are all the codons in our DNA. There's 64 of them. According to the research of Greg Braden, only 22 of the 64 codons are turned on. Imagine what you could do if all of your codons in your DNA were activated. This is the key for me. So basically, a codon sends the message to our DNA on what our DNA receptors can and cannot do. Only 20, 22 of these are turned on. So in other words, 42 are turned off, which means we are capable of so much more. And that's where we're heading right now. So imagine being able to have every ability known to mankind and then some. Imagine being able to teletransport or to uh, manifest things out of thin air right now. That's what we can do if we can figure this out. And I volunteered to be the guinea pig. <laughs> so a lot of us are familiar with Masa the late Dr. Masaru Emoto and his work with uh, consciousness and water. And as you can see, when you put that focused intention into water, these are what you get. And my favorite one is Imagine with John Lennon. It, it's just so beautiful. Um, and, and the words that he speaks are so resonant of how I feel. I mean, to me, it's the most beautiful one up there.
But Dr. Masaru Emoto did prove that water has consciousness. What they ended up doing to get this, for those who aren't familiar with Dr. Masaru Emoto, they had pictures next to water, and you would put that focused intention into the water, and then they cryogenically froze the water, sliced it up into thin slices, and put it under a microscope. And these are the pictures that they ended up with. So our bodies are comprised of anywhere between 56 to 72% water at any given time. So if Dr. Emoto proved that focus intention affects the body structure, what can focus intention do to the water in our bodies? That's what I'm working with, and you're looking at it. They say that cancer cannot exist in an alkaline body, which is why I started drinking alkaline water. Any water would work for what I'm doing with my experiment, but for me, it feels like I'm getting that added benefit from the alkaline water. Um, so that I, I choose alkaline water for my experiment. I want to just read you something that's fascinating about ozone, because I also use this ozone machine that's on top of the water cooler right there. In the Hunza County in the Himalayan mountains, the average life expectancy is 120 years of age. 110 year olds play sports with the younger men. They work 10, 12 hours a day in the fields. Some live to be 130 years of age and more. There's no cancer, no heart disease, no diabetes, no arthritis. So why do they live? such long and healthy lives. Their soil, water, and food is different than ours. They don't have the mental stress that we have. But the biggest contributing factor is pure ozone. And that the Hunza Mountains are 7,000 feet above sea level, so the ozone there is natural. Here we are at sea level. I have to make my own. <laughs> So on N5D, I have an article that lists 100 benefits of ozone water. And here are a few of them. Ozone prevents, ozone water prevents premature aging, arthritis, Alzheimer's. It helps in digestion and brain function. It kills parasites, candida, viruses, bacteria. It burns fat and excess sugar and so many more other benefits that you can read about on N5D. And speaking of premature aging, <laughs> I have a picture of myself by the ozone machine. <laughs> this is when I was younger, and this is what I put up there to rejuvenation, uh, to rejuvenate my body. I, I look at that picture and I say, okay, I'm gonna be that young again. I also have another picture there, but Michelle <laughs> says that's too young. <laughs> So, and as you can see, I had a lot of gray hair then. This is back in 2010. Yeah, my hair was a lot grayer back then. And that's my daughter, Brittany. Um, and here's another one from 2010. <laughs> this is funny. This is what I mean about remaining a kid, being, being a kid and doing kid-like things. Uh, Brit th and this is how Brittany brings out the child in me, too. <laughs> so we go to Walmart and we take funny pictures on their laptop computers, and then we save the pictures as background photos. So when people walk by, they're going to see this on their computer. <laughs> but look at the gray hair once again. You know, I don't color my hair. And when I was younger, I used to have blonde hair. And uh, it's all coming back. And I attribute this to the ozone water. Um, in the process that I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> so I also do what's called reversing on my water. And in black magic, they use reversing as a way to manifest. And I figured, what the heck, why can't we use this for the positive as well? Because it's all being used against us. 
So my intention is all of my codons are open. Remember, we only have 22 of the 64 codons open. And I put that intention into the water. And then I reverse it, Nepo, Era, Snowdoc, Yimphala. All of my codons are open. So I put that into the ozone alkaline water that I drank. I also use sigils. And this is the glass I actually use. Um, is anyone familiar what a sigil is? A few people, okay. A sigil basically is an inscribed or painted symbol considered to have magical powers. And those in power use these against us all the time. And once again, I think to myself, why can't we use this for the good? And, and that's why I ended up making this. So the way you make a sigil is you write down your intention. My intention was all of my codons are open. And then you eliminate all the vowels. You eliminate all the letters that repeat. And then you arrange them in a pattern. And you can find online sigil generators that will arrange them in a pattern for you. And so you can have, and you have, there's different fonts and different styles. This was the one that reached me. I really like this one. So when you, you really can't see anything in that, but what it does say, when you look at it, it's an imprint. It's almost like a galactic download. All my codons are open every time you drink out of that glass. Okay, and lastly, I use binary code, and that's right above my picture. And you can find binary code generators for whatever your intentions are. This, all this binary code, and basically what binary code is, it's a coding system using the binary digits of one and zero to represent a letter, digit, or other character in a computer. What I find interesting in this too is, you're gonna see like 1111 there, uh, there. <laughs> You got all of your 1111s in here, and uh, they keep popping up. So, but this is the binary code for all my codons are open. So I'm making my water. I've got that. I've got the sigil glass. I got my re rejuvenation picture. Got it all working for me so far. Um, also, the binary code too. If everything does break down to zeros and ones, that's probably why many of us have had those 1111 experiments, experiences rather, you know, where it pops up and you're like, well, of course it's 11-11, I just looked at my clock. <laughs> so, that's, that's the binary code, like I said, for all my codons are open. And I have this picture next to my ozone machine as well. So, so far we have what I've been doing as a guinea pig, focused intention, alkaline water, ozone water, rejuvenation photos, reversing, the sigil glass, and binary code. So with the ozone water in the glass, I'll take the ozone diffuser and spin it around clockwise, and then I'll spin it around counterclockwise, and I'll say, Nupo, Era, Snow, Doc, Yimpla, all my codons are open. I'll say that over and over again. And before I drink the water, I ask the universe, creator, source, higher self, my posse, I ask them right down, right down the line to uh, help me turn on all of the codons in my DNA so I can heal myself and others in humanity's best interest. I also use Ho'oponopono on the water, and that gives it a little extra energy because you know, by saying I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you, the water's just like ecstatic. It's, it just wants to jump into my mouth at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been basically my own guinea pig in this whole process, but all it takes is just one person to figure out how to open up all the codons in your DNA. One person is all it takes. So feel free, I encourage anyone to experiment. Use what I'm doing. Try turning it around. Add stuff to it. Take stuff away. Try figuring out what it is that will make you open up all the codons in your DNA. It can happen. It can happen and one of us is going to do it. So. This is my vision right now. As soon as I open up all of, all of the codons in my DNA, I'm gonna lay my hands down on the ground and I'm gonna ask my higher self to, to connect with every higher self on the planet. And I'm gonna heal them. I'm gonna heal everybody. Then I'm gonna heal, and you're gonna have a DNA upgrade. If I can figure this out, all your codons are gonna be open too. Then I'm gonna lay my hands on the ground and I'm gonna heal Mother Earth. 
no more poison food, no more chemtrails, no more our water, air, and food supply are all going to be healed. And the best part about it is nobody's going to know it was this introvert. <laughs> Except for you guys. <laughs> That's it for me, though. Thank you very much. Okay, so what time is it? A, a little early. Okay, we're going to take a break. Um, and if you want to get your, go ahead and get your lunch ordered right now. You've got about 15 minutes, and then I'll place the lunch order. And we will be back here at 11 o'clock sharp for Carrie's presentation. Okay, thank you.